Among flintknappers, projectile point styles from New England are often overlooked by those people outside this region. One style from this region that is well known among knappers are Susquehanna points. These points are from an often overlooked period of time, the late archaic. I myself have not paid this style much attention until recently and enjoyed making them for the first time and learning about the ancient people who made them as tools. Susquehanna points are part of a broader technological tradition called the Susquehanna tradition. Other point styles associated with this style include Perkelman, Dry Brook, Eshtabula, and more. The Susquehanna tradition occurred at the Terminal Archaic, which is another way of saying at the end of the Late Archaic period, right before the Woodland period. The dates for this tradition start at around 4000 BP to 2500 BP in the early woodland period. The late archaic is broadly characterized by several important trends. Long distance exchange for exotic materials became widespread. Native Americans began domesticating eastern agricultural complex crops such as squash, kinopodium, marsh elder, sumpweed, etc. Cemeteries also became more widespread during the late archaic. With this, earthen mounds for burials were introduced as well. With Susquehanna tradition burials, red ochre was sprinkled over the cremated remains of the dead. Many of the points from the late archaic period are stemmed, which includes all the styles associated with the Susquehanna tradition. Other technologies associated with the Susquehanna tradition include carved steatite bowls, early crude clay pottery, end scrapers, drills, and ground stone tools.
Susquehanna points are medium to large points with expanding stems. The blade edges are extravate. Susquehanna and related point styles often had asymmetrical blades. This would not impede function since use wear, damage wear, and blade geometry suggests that these were mostly used as knives rather than as projectiles. The shoulders of Susquehanna points can be horizontal, but are commonly known for slanting upwards. The base of these points is concave or flat. The stem on Susquehanna points appears to have been made starting with the removal of the basal corners of the preform. Then, pressure flaking or punching created a stem with the deepest point being in the middle of this removed area, extending perpendicular to the long axis of the blade.
The Susquehanna tradition is associated with the New England region, spreading northeast from Ohio into Maine and Ontario. Not all of the projectile point styles associated with this tradition occur across this entire geographic range, but there is a great deal of overlap. When available, chert and jasper were used to manufacture these tools, and when not available, fine-grained yet tougher igneous and metamorphic rocks had to do. While tougher rock is durable for use, it is harder to flintknap tools from. Ohio Flint Ridge Flint, Onondaga Chert, and Pennsylvania Jasper are some of the notable chert types that were used to manufacture Susquehanna tradition points, the last material quite associated with these styles in Pennsylvania. Rhyolite, andesite, quartzite, quartz, and argillite are some of the metamorphic and igneous rocks that were used to make these points. Mount Kineo Rhyolite is a famous source of material for Susquehanna tradition points to be manufactured from around the state of Maine. The stemmed forms of these points would have been easier to make with those tougher to nap igneous and metamorphic materials than notched styles of points. The material I'm napping this Susquehanna point from is heat treated Flint Ridge Flint from Ohio. While domesticated foods were becoming available to late archaic people, they were not as important as food resources obtained by foraging and hunting, if these domesticates were present in their diet at all. As with earlier archaic peoples, hickory, acorns, and walnut were important food resources. Later archaic sites have provided evidence of the use of blackberry, goosefoot, bayberry, pokeweed, and wild grape with charred seed remains. There is evidence that the people associated with the Susquehanna tradition 
were shifting their subsistence practices towards riverine and coastal food exploitation. Fish bones, large net sinkers, and large, fire-cracked rock ovens occurring at the same sites demonstrate large-scale fish processing by late archaic peoples, including those of the Susquehanna tradition. Shellfish were easier to collect than fish and provided another source of protein available from marine environments. Deer, turkey, seals, and other medium-to-large animals were hunted for their meat. 